And here we go. This is a match which I've been anticipating for a while. It is Yugi against Joey. Battle City. They played each other at the very end of the series, but we didn't actually see the duel. It was just a short scene of them getting started. Joey was competing back for custody of his red eyes. Will he win this duel and possibly give us an insight of who won that match? Because we didn't actually find out. All right, Yugi wins the rock, paper, scissors. He elects to go first. And we're underway. All right, there's Soul Taker, Dark Magician, Monster Reborn, Buster Blade. Oh. Brother, ew. That is a bit of a brick of a hand from Yugi. Uh, down goes Light Force Sword. I mean, it is, it is part of the game, drawing bad hands. And Yugi, despite having some of his good monsters, he's going to have a hard time getting them to the field. All right, Light Force Sword is activated. That will pick a card randomly from Joey's hand and put it out of play for four turns. All right, Joey with a face down spell or trap. Another face down spell or trap. And Gear Freed the Iron Knight. Heavy loss of life points here for Yugi, 1800. That's gonna put him to 6200. He does have Soul Taker, so he can get Gear Freed off the field and summon it back with Monster Reborn as a play. Light of Intervention. Well, I tell you what, Yugi might have no choice but to do that. Down goes Soul Taker. Gear Freed is destroyed. It will give Joey a thousand life points. Uh, I, don't, I don't think Yugi really has any choice. He's gonna have to play Monster Reborn and he's gonna pull Gear Freed the Iron Knight back. So Yugi's Monster Reborn is gone. It's used up. But he kind of had to, otherwise he's probably going to lose more life points and be further back in terms of monsters. Alright, there we go. 1800 off Joey. He's down to 6200. Yugi would love to get a Buster Blader or a Dark Magician to the field. Alright, Light Force Sword is up to second turn. And Joey plays Panther Warrior, which uh, it can't declare an attack unless Joey tributes a monster, but it does act as a 2,000 attack shield, so Gear Freed can't destroy it. There's Obnoxious Celtic Guard. Yugi plays face down in defense and could be looking at a Buster Blader next turn if Gear Freed and Obnoxious Celtic Guard both survive the turn. Joey now, he is Tributed Panther Warrior. And oh, here we go, out comes Jinzo. 2400, the card that Joey won from Esper Roba. And Gear Freed the Iron Knight is Jinzo's attack target. Yugi has lost another 600 points, down to 5600, and Joey well in, well in command here. Oh, Sly for the Sky Dragon. But with the hand that Yugi has, he cannot do anything at all with it. All right, Light Force Sword down to turn three, and it's the fourth standby phase now for Joey. So he returns his card that he lost at the very start from the effect of Lightning Sword. We don't see what that card is yet, but... Okay, Jinzo attacks Obnoxious Celtic Guard, which can't be destroyed by a monster that has 1,900 or more. And, ooh, our trained of Gilfa. It's a 2500 defense. It's not strong enough to defeat Jinzo. And with only 1200 defense, you don't really want Obnoxious Celtic Guard just sitting around on the field for too long. Yugi does have cards that can get that off the field. Uh, Queen's Knight, King's Knight, Gazelle. It's oh, sorry. Uh, Joey's perspective. Uh, Joey's got Rocket Warrior. He's got... He's got cards over 1,200. Um, all right, Jinzo attacks Archrain of Gilfa. Is now flipped up. Uh, Axe Raider is another card that Joey has over nine, uh, under 1,900 attack. All right, Yugi's drawn Burfamet, which uh, does require a tribute. 
Yugi has absolute. That is the. What a terrible hand. Four monsters with five or more stars. He also had Archrain of Guilford in his hand a few turns ago. Yugi is not drawing any low level monsters. And. Alright, there's Garuzis. Battle Warrior was tributed. There's another card under. that would have been able to destroy Celtic Guard. Magical Dimension. It would have helped if Yugi had a spellcaster on the field, which he does not. So Yugi just sitting here hoping that Joey doesn't finally manage to get through this defense. So Joey with some thought. Is he going to play anything? He does. He plays a face down defense. And goes straight to the end phase. So he's still. Oh, summon skull. Alright, summon skull's a good card to use. Oh, yes, he's going for it. He's going for it. Our train of Gilfer is tributed. Summon skull comes to the field. It is a risk. There are three cards down for Joey right now. But he can attack Jinzo. And remember, Jinzo blocks trap cards as well. That that includes Joey's... Oh, Roulette Spider. Yugi doesn't want six. Oh, you are kidding me. Oh, that is so unlucky. If you're on Yugi's side, that is. If you're Joey, you're literally so happy you just done a goddamn backflip. Joey unbelievably has rolled a six. And Yugi Summon Skull is cleared Roulette Spider. See, now Joey's deck is based off very... It is a luck-based deck. Now, is this enough? So, 2700 with Garuzis and Flame Manipulator. 40... Oh, yeah, it's more than enough. Wow, Joey has absolutely pasted Yugi in the first match of this. So, in theory, yes, Joey could have won back his Red-Eyes Black Dragon, as we have seen in this match. However... For our tournament, we are doing best of three. So let's set the lobby back up. As I quickly come over and where have I put my drink? Why do I do this every time I play Yu-Gi-Oh? Every time I have Yu-Gi-Oh playing, every time I'm recording my commentary, I... Where, where is it? Ah, there it is. All right. Do this every time with Yu-Gi-Oh. I put my drink somewhere and I forget where it is. Alright, there we go. I have relocated my drink. Vanilla Coke, if anyone's wondering. Alright, here we go. This is match two, and Joey... That's not a bad hand. Hey, a booster knight. That can attack twice. Uh, legendary fisherman's in there. Uh, question... And a legendary sword. Alright, Protector of the Throne is there as well. That is a tribute. Uh, sorry, a. Uh, it's part of Guilty of the D Knight, which is in Joey's fusion pile. Uh, Joey plays Panther Warrior. Can't attack, but 2000 is a good shield. And at only four stars. Be useful if Joey drew his scapegoat. Alright, Yugi goes with another face down spell or trap. And is content to end his turn. Baby Dragon. Uh, Joey can summon Legendary Fisherman at this stage if he chooses to. There's Light of Intervention, so monsters can't be played face down now. Alright, Legendary Fisherman is coming to the field. 1850 and... Is Joey going to equip it? No, he's changed his mind. No, he's changed his mind again. All right. Well, it's a legendary fisherman. What better to go with him than a legendary sword? Up to 2150 now. Now, remember that. Um, magical hats. Okay. 
Yugi opting to protect that face down card. Or maybe he doesn't want it flipped up. Maybe it's got an effect. Which could still... Okay, there goes Chain Destruction and Defusion. They have displayed face up though from the effect of Light of Intervention. So the Magical Hats effect isn't actually benefiting Yugi here. What is the... Is that maybe a... Maybe he didn't know that the magic and traps would be displayed face up. It's Obnoxious Celtic Guard. Oh, no. Actually, from a point of view, Yugi activating that gets two cards out of his deck that potentially wouldn't be helpful because Defusion and Chain Reaction, while can be useful, in this era of Yu-Gi-Oh, are you really going to go that in-depth of a strategy to play Defusion and... When you think about it, those are two cards that Yugi probably doesn't want to draw right now. So now they are both out of his deck, which means he has a higher chance of drawing something that he needs. So from that point of view, maybe just popping up the magical hats to get rid of those two cards is a good idea. Um, all right. The thing is, Joey has nothing to actually get over 1,200 defense. So... Uh, if that legendary sword wasn't a legendary fisherman, it would have been able to destroy... Oh, there's Shield and, uh, Shield and Sword. Protector of the Throne is a 1500 defense. Joey calls it to the field, and it looks like he's going to flip. And he is. Shield and Sword. Protector of the Throne now becomes 1500. And Obnoxious Celtic Guard is destroyed. And Legendary Fisherman, now with 1900... I did see earlier, Joey may have been thinking about getting that Hayabusa Knight to the field and equipping that with a Legendary Sword. And I don't know if anyone can hear it, but you might hear a little bit of a low rumbling noise. It is raining outside of my house. Well, outside of my house, I will assume that it is also raining down to the end of the street as well. And in the current area. It is peak winter right now in Western Australia. Doesn't get as cold as places in the world though, the UK and Canada. Even in your summer, you're probably still colder than our winter. Alright, Hayabusa Knight comes to the field. That can attack twice. And you... Ah! Oh, mirror Force. I, I, it's a disgusting card. Joey played so well, and just like that, his entire field has just been completely obliterated. Ten turns in. Oh, okay, Joey's gone for question. Does Yugi remember what monster was first? What monster was first? I think it was Panther Warrior. Yes, it was Panther Warrior, because Panther Warrior... Panther Warrior was tributed. I'm whispering it now, just so Yugi's player doesn't hear it. They can't hear me in their headsets, so I have to yell out to them. Okay, Yugi has selected Panther Warrior. Ah, oh, and it was Panther Warrior. Good memory. I was whispering, so... I wasn't heard in any way, but... They're far enough away from me that they wouldn't be able to hear me anyway. Alright, there's a face down from Yugi. And Gamma and Alpha now both on the field in attack mode. That'd be 29. Oh, Monster Reborn. Oh, that's mean. That is mean to bring back Legendary Fisherman. 1850. Okay, so what? 2900, 3900, and 850. So what? 4750? Uh, so that'll leave Joey with what? 3350 after all the attacks are done. Which, oh, that's devastating. This match has been flipped straight onto its head. 32.50, close enough. Um, yeah, Joey in trouble with just Rocket Warrior and Baby Dragon. There is Magical Arm Shield on the field. There's Polymerization. Unfortunately, Joey doesn't have Time Wizard. Could have used him, could have made Thousand Dragon. Alright, what do you do here if you're Joey? 
plays Rocket Warrior. A Rocket Warrior can't be destroyed by battle during Joey's battle phase. Now, this card attacks a monster after damage calculation. That attack target loses 500 points. So, I don't believe Legendary Fisherman will lose 500 points until Joey makes that attack after the damage calculation. So, what does he go for here? He could, he could go for Gamma. It will only destroy Gamma. Rocket Warrior will be fine. Oh, Magic Cylinder. Yugi has got all the answers. He has got all the answers in this match. All right, Magic Cylinder will put 1,500 points of damage onto Joey. And with very little life points remaining as it is, it looks like Yugi is going to take this second match. It's been a good match. Won't lie, it has been a good match. But it's going to be tough for Joey to come back from here. All right, there's Queen's Knight. Okay, Rocket Warrior under attack. Joey does have Magical Arm Shield and he's elected to play it. He won't be able to pull the Legendary Fisherman. He... Alright, there goes there goes Gamma, but it's not going to matter. Um, uh, Joey, he could have actually played that different. He could have waited... Oh, no, he couldn't, because if Rocket Warrior was destroyed, uh, the effect wouldn't have been able to be activated anyway. You need a monster on the field for a Magical Arm Shield to be activated. Joey made a good decision, actually, there. Uh, attacking with Legend... Oh, Yugi, sorry. He made a good decision there, attacking with Legendary Fisherman first. If he didn't, then Joey could have nicked uh, Legendary Fisherman to his side of the field for that turn and would have got another card in, but... With only Baby Dragon and Polymerization in the field, Joey would have had to have been lucky and draw a Time Wizard, I think, to have any change on that match. But we will go to a tiebreaker. Third round, Yugi wins Rock, Paper, Scissors and has elected to go first. So, all right, winner take all. Winner take the Red Eyes, maybe. But, nah, Joey won the first match. We'll, we'll claim it that Joey probably got given his Red Eyes Black Dragon back, even if he did lose. All right, Light Force Sword is down. There's Big Shield Gardener as well. That's a 2600 defense. Uh, Diffusion Wave Motion. That's not too bad if you have a good Spellcaster on the field. And your opponent has a lot of defense. You can attack everything at once. But... All right, Face Down S Trap of Light Force Sword is activated. We did see this in the first duel, so Joey will lose a card from his hand. Alright, Joey with a face down spell or trap and a gear freed the Iron Knight, which we have seen once in this match, but with a 2600 defense, 800 points off Joey, Big Shield Gardener will go to attack mode but it is safe. So, when it when it's attacked, it does move to attack mode. Ooh, Summon Skull. Yugi again with a clutch draw. He has drawn his 2500 attacker. And you don't really want to lay Obnoxious Celtic Guard to the field now. It could be destroyed by Gear Freed. All right, down goes the Summon Skull. Does Joey have anything to on the field to defend with? Does he have another roulette spider? Or a uh, skull dice? No. Fairy box. So Joey will call a heads or tails. And it is heads. So he will lose gear freed. If it was in Joey's favor, summon skulls attack would have gone to zero and it would have done nothing to gear freed. Summon skull wouldn't have been destroyed, but it would have blocked the attack. Now, Fairy Box does require you to pay 500 life points per turn, so Joey does pay it. And goes with a face down spell or trap. Ooh, straight at the end phase, so only high level monsters perhaps in Joey's hand. He does have a few of them, Jinzo in Gear Freak the Lightning. But in trouble now, 
Yugi has 3,900 points of attack power on the field. Okay, Heads is selected for Fairy Box. Oh, Joey gets it. Obnoxious Celtic Guard to zero. Summon Skull attacks. Fairy Box is activated. Joey selects Tails this time. Oh, you're kidding me. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, they will only remain at zero until the end of the turn. But Joey, with the cost of 500 life points, has managed to save himself 3,900, which uh, would have left him with 2,100 points. So Joey has managed to avoid both attacks. And he has now got a face-down monster to the field. All right, there's Valkyrie on the Magna Warrior. I wonder if we will ever see that be able to be played. Very difficult to summon, very strong, mind you, but... And there is Defusion, ironically, in Yugi's hand as well. All right, Summon Skull goes in for an attack. Fairy Box is activated. Oh, Magical Arm Shield. Interesting. So he's taken Obnoxious Celtic Guardian. He'll take some life point damage. It won't be destroyed. And Tails... Was... Ah, uh, that must have been before um, the activation timing or something. So Joey has gone to some lengths to keep that card face down on the field. With the way he just played that. I wonder why. Maybe he's... He doesn't really have that many effect monsters. He could could just be that he wants to uh He wants to make a play for the field. And Joey's having a bit of a thing. He did pay to have fairy box. Oh there we go. He's summoned Garuzis. And Oh good play, Shield and Sword. Uh, that's going to get Summon Skull off the field. With only 1,200 defense, what a play from Joey. Using the effect of Magical Arm Shield to think ahead to the next turn. Put Garuzis down and get rid of it with the effect of Shield and Sword. Alright, Yugi now on the back foot. He will have to defend. And Obnoxious Celtic Guard goes to defense mode. That won't be able to stay on the field with Garuzis hanging about. And Yugi's got really nothing else in his hand, so... Alright, Joey's turn, he has deactivated Fairy Box this time. And he's gone to Tribute Garuzis, and oh, Jinzo, here we go, Joey's in control now. Ooh, I tell you what though, Jinzo won't be able to get Obnoxious Celtic Guard off the field, so unless Joey's got something else in his hand, it is only a 1200 defense. So Joey should be fine. He's got cards like Alligator Sword, Axe Raider, uh, Ro uh, Rocket Warrior. He's got cards that can get rid of Obnoxious Celtic Guard. Which has gone to attack mode. Yugi has drawn Brain Control. And this is going to be... Uh, 38. Joey is going to have 100 life points left. And with Jinzo still on the field, uh, it doesn't even matter because Yugi hasn't even got any trap guards. Currently out. And Joey down now to 100 points. Basically any uh, direct attack will end it, even if he gets defeated in a battle and takes battle damage. Joey goes for the face down defense. In this era of Yu-Gi-Oh, that's not too risky. In GX, you wouldn't be able to do that. Piercing damage is a lot more common. But a thousand points from the attack on Obnoxious Celtic Guard, though it does stay on the field. There's Gamma. Yugi, though, he's got nothing. He's decided not to play Gamma. That's a bit of a risk as well. But Joey, uh, don't really want to be putting any weak monsters in attack mode with only a thousand life points. Joey goes with another face down defense. Alright, Yugi draws Upstart Goblin. Interesting. It's put in the deck as a replacement for Pot of Greed because it's a banned card. I can't play it in multiplayer. 
All right, he's decided to play Upstart Goblin. It will give Joey a thousand life points, and he's drawn a giant soldier of stone. And he's decided to lay it down anyway, and he plays down Defusion, plays down Multiply, and plays down Diffusion Wave Motion. Maybe as a, uh... hey Joey, do I have any cards on the field? I mean, Joey with Jinzo on the field, he'd be pretty confident that no trap cards would be able to be activated anyway. Yugi low on options here. Joey, he's up to 1100 now, so he could take a risk and three tributes. Oh, Guildford. Yes, Guildford the Lightning. Yes, you can tribute three monsters to tribute summon this card. If summon this way, destroy all your opponent's monsters. Now that does include Jinzo, and down goes a legendary sword. Now Joey, oh, he's gone for the risk. He's gone for the direct attack. He pretty much has to. 3,100 off Yugi. This would be an amazing comeback if Joey can win it. Given that he had 100 life points, Yugi was still in the 6,000s, and now Yugi is on the back foot. Oh, no. Joey doesn't have Jinzo on the field anymore. That magic cylinder could do it. I mean, they both got headsets on. They wouldn't hear me anyway, but... Oh, no. Joey's seen that card go down. 3100 with Guildford the Lightning. If Yugi activates, there's Hayabusa Knight. Oh, Lightning Blade. Oh, if if Magic Cylinder wasn't on the field, Joey could have won. He could have attacked. You can attack twice with Hayabusa Knight per turn. Oh no. No! <laughs> Magic Cylinder is activated. Joey would have got the win. Oh, it was set perfectly. He would have done it. He would have destroyed that face down for sure. But Magic Cylinder has been activated. Oh, he got rid of Jinzo for it. And Yugi has picked up the win. What a match. Yugi, if he didn't have that Magic Cylinder, he would have lost. Joey was so close to picking up the victory. What a match, what an ending that is. Straight down to the wire. Oh, these Battle City duels really are delivering. That is absolute tragedy for Joey, absolute heartbreak. But if you're on Yugi's side, clutch draw. All right, so Yugi has picked up the win on that. Let's tick him. And in the next match, we will see Weevil, who we did see play today as well in Duelist Kingdom. Um, Weevil will be against Odeon, and we all know how Odeon's deck has been delivering some absolute classic matches. Odeon, the way he likes to defend and play traps, Weevil with his insect strategy. We could see a very, very technical duel between those two. Really looking forward to that. Um, let's pull up the standings as well. Yugi unbeaten for the moment as well. And... That will be pretty much it for me today. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Saw two good duels today. Um, I'm also doing a series on Super Mario right now as well. Going through Super Mario Bros. 3 and finding literally everything. I have already learned something new about that game, and it came in World 1-2, and I was dumbfounded. I never knew that one-up was there. Anyway, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I'll be back at it again tomorrow, hopefully, unless something happens, which is... 50 50 at this in this day and age anyway thanks everyone for tuning in keep the comments coming in love interacting with all of you wherever you are in the world stay safe keep well farewell